Okay. We're at the top of the hour. Thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it. This is our ProLink HFA webinar series. Um, today, we're talking about tips and tricks for optimizing your custom reporting using ProLink HFA. So we're going to be covering the multiple kind of options within ProLink HFA to produce reporting for your business needs. Um, today's agenda will cover our general information as we always do, introduce ProLink to any new guests we have on with us. Um, we'll then cover our business presentation and kind of technical pr presentation. I think these things will be sprinkled throughout as we talk about different examples of reporting um, in ProLink HFA. So today I have myself here and then also Kelly Insinias, who is our senior product manager for ProLink HFA. So thank you as always, Kelly, for joining us. I know many on the call today know you well, so we'll get started. Um, as you guys know, this webinar series we host it on a monthly basis occurring on the first Wednesday of each month, unless a holiday interrupts us. And they last about 45 minutes or so in length. Um, so we generally cover a business topic with a demo of ProLink's product offering as a means to support that business topic that we're discussing. Um, sometimes we even talk about new features and, and kind of what's coming in ProLink HFA. So that is the, the goal. And our audience are all housing finance agencies nationally. So we have clients on here. We have others who are not using ProLink who join in on this. It's kind of a mixed group. Um, about ProLink, if you're new to us, we have supported the affordable housing industry for um, many years now, since 1998, we've been in business, um, incorporated, and then I think our first housing agency we started working with between 2004 and 2006. So it's been quite a while uh, working within the affordable housing business. Uh, we started out supporting housing finance agencies, and it's still kind of the core of what we do today. We have expanded to support similar offerings to what we do for our HFAs for syndicators and investors as well. So um, portfolio management systems, uh, also offering Procorum as that uh, platform to work with external parties and provide more collaboration amongst our groups. And then Smart Docs, you guys know, is our tool that we use to enhance our reporting and map um, those spreadsheets and Word documents that we use on a regular basis with our partners to eliminate the manual process of entering data. So um, our, our work in general, we want to cover the full spectrum of your deal life cycle of your portfolio needs. So that's kind of the approach that we take as well as trying to cover the full spectrum of participants in affordable housing in the projects you're working on. So even offering at this point, we offer um, support with Procorum to developers and um, property managers and other partners. We're starting to try to support them as much as we can um, through Procorum and, and some of the, the technology we've developed there. Um, our goal at the end of the day is to make affordable housing as easy as we can to develop and um, properly maintain and, um, and kind of oversee, right? So real quick, this is just a little bit about ProLink's um, position in the industry. We support 17 housing finance agencies, two supportive service agencies. Um, we also support five syndicators. Industry partnerships were very involved in the NCSHA um, group. So all of the conferences that they put on were highly involved and usually sponsor. Um, we've had NCSHA representatives be our keynote speaker at our own conference for a couple of years now. And then we also support the NAMA XML standards group. So that's, that's something we're a member of. And we also host that group using Procorum. So um, many of you know, NAMA is the XML standard that property management tools, um, usually the larger systems like Yardi, RealPage, um, they use a standard XML um, to basically pr to export their data from those systems and allow um, your property agents to upload that information for tenant compliance. Um, we are participants in that group and host them on Procorum and try to help influence uh, the needed changes as program needs change to make sure that the fields that we're pulling 
hopefully automating and pulling out of their systems um, then reflect what we need at the agency level. Um, we host a number of industry sort of education and, and uh, networking opportunities. I don't know what you would kind of refer this as, maybe not networking, but just like the ability to reach out and connect with um, participants in Affordable. Through this, this webinar series, we just started one for developers and property managers too, a um, couple months back. So that was something that um, is new, but we have a growing interest as we support more agencies to provide um, guidance and insights into how to use Procorum to work with our agency clients and also industry needs for the developer and um, owner agent groups. Um, so we are starting to provide more support to them through that webinar series. You're welcome to attend it if you'd like to see what that's about. Um, I do share some of the recordings from those with our client base um, on the agency side with our agencies, such as like if we do a, a Procorum tour and we think it might be helpful for you to include in your package that you offer for onboarding new developers, I, I will include those links for you to share and use as part of your onboarding package as we do those events. So, um, so hopefully that continues to be an enhancement to our offering in the industry. We do quarterly user trainings, as many of our user group members know, we offer those. Our next one is coming up, I think it's next week, and it's HUD export, HUD reporting training through user group. And then we have our Tech Live conference, our ProLink Technology Live user conference, heavily training focused for our existing users. We usually have a couple hundred attendees across all of our agencies. Um, but we invite anyone who's interested to attend. So that's where we, you might see a guest speaker. Um, and we try to bring in some of the, our clients, involve them in panels to share and uh, collaborate on how we're working uh, business processes through ProLink HFA. And then finally, our technology leadership, we have um, good relationships with Amazon Web Services and DocuSign and have incorporated their products into some of our offerings. Um, and continue to do so. So this is just a quick little picture, again, kind of sharing our client reach across the nation, um, a little bit more of a visual representation of the agencies we serve. You can see here, this slide is kind of a bird's eye view slide we like to share. For anybody new to ProLink, um, and even those who might not be new, but may not use all aspects of ProLink HFA, so we offer um, ProLink HFA is our back office database system. And you can see our housing finance agency who's represented above who works there daily. That's your like your holy grail of data um, repository is in ProLink HFA. And then we have Procorum, which is our front end collaboration portal where you're gonna see all kinds of participants. Um, you're gonna have your developers, contractors, property managers. You're gonna be inviting them into your work centers or projects in Procorum to collaborate with them. Um, and then of course we have Smart Docs as that Excel and Word add-in tool to help get and send that data from your partners. Um, here is a slide showing our modules. So we have in ProLink our core, like ProLink HFA system that all of our clients are using. Um, they may not all use all of our clients may not use all of these modules or pieces of these modules in different ways, but our core offering of ProLink HFA includes always our um, multifamily development and bond financing module, our asset management and compliance module. We have single family development, and then you can see a few other um, areas that we have developed over time, supportive services, REO and Budget Pro are some of the ones that have been um, New new features and new um, business uses that Perlinks developed over time, and we're continuing to um, kind of build the group of users on those um, modules. They're kind of like sub modules, almost different pieces of functionality in Perlink. So, if any of that is of interest to you, please reach out to us or your user group representative, and we can look into some of that with you. Quickly going over user groups, since that's something that we don't focus on a ton in our webinars, I, I am trying to bring a little bit more light and um, share a little bit more information about our user group in this setting um, during 
the quarter. This quarter, we've been talking about uh, reporting, and we had a great opportunity in our last session to highlight the power of user group with that custom data views uh, feature that we just released. So our user group is made up of all of our clients. So all HFAs, when you're when you're on ProLink HFA, you are automatically um, as a client, you are you are grandfathered into our user group, and there's different levels of participation um, that we see across our agencies in the user group. But for the most part, everyone does participate and vote. Um, so it started as an opportunity for us to kind of collaborate with our clients and have them weigh into our product roadmap and, and kind of the evolution that we needed to plan for in ProLink HFA to stay relevant in the affordable housing business. And it, it continues to really serve as that. Um, we also have a lot of other opportunities for collaboration as uh, needs arise across our user base we try as much as we can to connect um, our clients together and partner on initiatives together. So um, this program started in 2014. It's been alive and well ever since then. It has certainly um, grown in formality since its very early days in 2014 um, as we've onboarded more and more agencies. And it really does get stronger every year that we have it as part of um, kind of the way that we build new features into ProLink HFA. So, so far, I just got this metric from our finance department. In 2023, um, our user group has elected approximately 30% of the year's planned feature enhancements. So it, it definitely is a, um, it, you guys have a, a big say in what ProLink does every year in new features in the direction we take our products. Um, so we thank you for your participation and attention during the sessions that we host for user group. Um, quickly to just tee us up for the rest of the presentation with Kelly covering reporting. I know I covered this last time as well, but um, for those new to ProLink, uh, we will use the term data views. You're gonna see some information about data views today. Um, data views are available within ProLink HFA and it allows you to look at data um, by screen in a kind of a list format um, and um, view information associated with that screen. So um, the concept behind it is to provide kind of like quick reporting or quick visualization um, of information if you're kind of called up and asked to provide um, you know, some metrics or high level information about the area of the business that you're focused in, data views might be really helpful for doing that. It does not serve every reporting need out there. There's plenty of reporting needs that our clients have, board packages, um, you know, all kinds of um, executive level reporting that would require more of like a formatted um, approach. And those are accomplished with SSRS reports for the most part. Um, so that is something where you may have internally report writers um, that if you have like an IT team, a larger IT team within your agency, you might have report writers who um, can produce those for you, or you might engage ProLink or maybe have in the past engaged ProLink to produce those reports for you. And those do allow you to have um, more like control over the format of data and um, user defined filtering capabilities that you might be limited by within data views. Um, the last thing I'll say between the two of them is um, that custom data view feature that we developed and released is kind of a happy medium between those two things. So it allows us now to take the data views that we know and love and um, reach across different screens um, of data that were not previously avail available in data views. Um, so that's a new op opportunity for us to enhance and kind of get more, more specific with the views of data within ProLink HFA. So at this point, I'm gonna hand it off to Kelly. She's gonna walk us through um, the options between data views, um, some examples of SSRS reports, um, and even dashboards that ProLink offers to kind of facilitate reporting needs across our client base. Thanks, Bree. I'm gonna go ahead and take over the screen sharing. And um, 
Bree, let me know that you can see my screen okay. Yep, you're good. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, so today for the technical presentation or the demonstration portion um, of the meeting, we're going to look at um, dashboards um, and then we're going to jump in live to the system um, and take a look at NCSHA reporting. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right into our dashboards. So, um, you know, some of you may have seen, you might recall, um, we now have a dashboards folder available in that main menu panel in that left navigation menu. Um, that the dashboards that are available there um, are, as you can kind of see in this screenshot, they're offering details about um, your development pipeline, um, deals by stage, again, development deals, um, portfolio, which is your asset management and compliance details, and then tax credit allocation. Um, each of these cards that you see available um, in the dashboard um, can be expanded um, and or exported to Excel um, if you need deeper um, formatting and, and charting and, which, and whatnot. Um, and each graph does also offer hover over detail. So, you know, in a bar chart, you hover over new construction, you kind of see more detail about where that information is coming from. Um, so as we kind of look into each of the um, different tabs, the different dashboards that we do have available, we look at the detail in our development tab. Um, you can see that um, you're able to sort by fiscal year. So that's gonna follow fiscal year um, recorded in your development deals. Um, and your options there, you can choose all fiscal years, you can choose a single fiscal year, or you can choose multiple years. You know, Say you could choose like a range of years like, I want to see 2020 through 2023, something along those lines, um, you know, whatever your reporting is demanding. Um, and so in this development tab, you're looking at your total units by deal types um, and then your um, number of deals by deal types. And you've got, you know, those those upper cards are giving you those straight numbers. And then the lower charts are you know, showing you a visualization of, you know, for example, that 3,100 units, there's, you know, 2.2 in new construction, you know, just about 0.9 um, in new deals, um, and then, you know, less than one in ACK rehab. Um, and so, you know, available again, you know, hover over, expanding and exporting to Excel are available. Um, in that tab. The next tab that we look into the detail here is our deals by stage. And again, um, this is dev deals that we're looking at by deal stage. Um, no filtering capability here because we are looking across all the various stages that are offered within those development deals. And again, you can see we have the same sort of presentation here with total units, um, overall that number, and then that chart below describing that 178, right? You know, 159 are um, in dispersing and so on through those different stages. Um, and then we also are offering that total deals, right? Active in your pipeline. That's a big number right there. Hopefully nobody's actually working on that many all at once. Um, you know, 2300 there. And then, of course, in that um, pie chart presentation, um, and again, across the stages of those deals. Okay. The next tab that we look into is what's called portfolio. So again, um, this is your, your, you know, asset management and compliance, right? This is your monitoring portfolio. Again, not filtered because um, we're just looking at units and properties active within our portfolio, right? So, you know, 122,000 um, is our total units in our portfolio. And then um, we spread those out across what we call process type. 
um, which is very typically financing um, program types that are um, contributing or present active in those properties. We then look at total properties here on the right, 1,500 there. And then again, we're looking at a pie chart of, again, that process type or, or program types, okay? Next, we take a look into um, our tax credit allocation um, tab there. So right, our, our LIHTC deals. Um, here we do have filtering available, and this is going to be by your cycle year, your allocation year, right? Um, and again, you can choose all years, a single year, or, you know, again, multiple years, right? Like, so you could look across a range of your allocation years. Um, and then again, we're detailing your total active LIHTC deals, then breaking down that number of deals um, by your cycle, right? So your nines versus fours, um, and then further detail um, down into the various flavors of nines and fours across the many years that you may have selected, okay? Um, and then of course, TCA, your tax credit deals, um, where you have your dev deals participating, um, you know, and that 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 picture can, you know, look like many different scenarios, right? You might be looking at 4% that have, um, you know, a bond finance loan. Um, you might be looking at 9% with maybe some home funding in there too, right? And so, um, you know, again, we're seeing um, those numbers of deals, LIHTC with DEV, other funding um, broken down there um, and then further broken down across the multiple years that you may have selected, okay? Um, that wraps us up really for, for our dashboard um, portion of the demonstration. Now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna break out of the slide deck here in just a moment and go live in the system, but um, we're going to focus in NCSHA reporting. Um, and so some of you might recall, we took a little look at this last year at Tech Live. Um, I wanted to bring this back to our attention um, this year so that we're really thinking about um, this reporting and really using the product, um, you know, to streamline and benefit ourselves. So, you know, we know 23 sections, right, in that NCSHA survey. 10 of those can be supported by ProLink HFA. Um, we um, are making the recommendation that that final um, response document that you complete and submit to NCSHA, save that on the applicable tax credit allocation, right? So, you know, right now you're working on 2022. So, you know, go ahead and save that on your 2022 9% cycle. And then you always have reference to um, that submission um, for that given year. Um, of course, um, we're recommending to use data views. Now, I do want to make a quick point here. You know, we talked um, last month, right? We talked about our custom data views and this idea that we could really build this different kind of reporting. And so, you know, I've taken a bit of a look into custom data views and, and do they make sense? Are they possible um, to help support this NCSHA reporting? And, you know, really what, I, what I'm what i finding is that um, it doesn't make sense really to do custom data views to try to combine these sections, right? Um, they've made these sections separate because it's separate information that they're asking you for, right? So, you know, thinking about trying to combine sections one through five, it's like trying to combine apples and oranges and grapes and strawberries and mangoes. It just doesn't really make sense. Um, so we're still really recommending that you create these views within your data views um, and just keep those and then reuse those every year um, and use the, you know, capabilities of filtering, you know, by the 
by the cycle year really to get your numbers. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and dive in and you can see here, we're gonna look at sections one through five, seven, nine, and then 10 through 12, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and break out of the slide deck. Before I do that very quickly, I do want to let you know, remind everybody that, um, you know, if I move ahead in my slide deck, every screen that I'm gonna be showing you live in the system is available here in the slide deck. So um, don't, don't be worried about trying to, you know, make a lot of detailed notes for yourself um, because you'll have this detail here in the slide deck that we share with you, okay? So I want everybody to be able to kind of really look at the system and what we're doing um, and not worry about kind of um, diving into those notes. And also, my slide deck is my script to make sure that I show you everything that I need to within the system. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're gonna start in section one. Um, this is housing credit authority, right? Um, we're wanting to um, answer the questions there um, in that section. And so what we're recommending for this um, for section one is to use your 8610. So as I come into my utilities menu here, um, I'm going to be focusing in my TCA section. Um, and here I'm going to access my tax form 8610. Okay. So as I dive in, and I'm going to take a look at 2021 because I'm falling behind and I'm not working on 2022 very much yet. So as I dig into 2021, um, what we're really looking at here is utilizing um, kind of this part two here and the detail that's provided here um, to complete that section one, um, A through F, you're able to um, utilize those numbers there, okay? So as you're building that 8610 in the system, it's just there, you can just hop right in Use that detail that, you know, you've already built out by associating your 8609s and your Schedule A's and plug that detail right into Section 1 um, for that NCSHA, okay? So um, let's go ahead and move in now to our actual data view. So we're going to start out talking about Sections 2 through 3 um, in that survey. And um, to address that housing credit applications and units receiving allocations, we're going to utilize our TCA. Again, I'm here in my data views menu. Um, I'm focusing in my TCA section here in my left nav, and I'm going into properties to start out. Okay. Now, of course, I have created these various views that I'm going to use to show you today. And I've labeled these views. You can see when I select my view dropdown, I've labeled these directly as the section um, that I need to use the information for in the survey. Okay. And again, um, I want to remind everybody that within the slide deck today, I detail each of these views for you, um, both the, the fields to include, the various fields that you're going to need. Um, as well as any advanced filtering that's applied um, to the particular view to get the numbers that you're looking for, okay? So here, we're looking at our um, section two through three again, um, and we are going after, um, you know, our total, um, I, sorry, um, total annual credit amount requested. Um, you know, that's our sum in footer. Um, we've got um, our, I'm sorry, number of records. Um, first question number three. Um, and various detail throughout this data view that addresses um, items, um, you know, A through C um, in that section um, two and three in that survey. Um, I would also mention to you that within the slide deck that you'll be receiving, um, I do have each data view here 
Um, and I have the description of, you know, filtering by your cycle year, um, things like, you know, using your total um, in footer for your total annual credit amount requested, and then linking each of these fields that you see in the data view to where you fill that in within the actual survey itself. Okay. So that detail is again, provided in the slide deck for you. So don't worry about trying to scribble down these details. Um, but anyway, so section two through three there, um, let's take a look also into our view manager and let's look at um, the advanced filtering that we use, um, you know, here within this view. And again, this is detailed within the slide deck, so don't worry about trying to take notes here. But, you know, we're looking, we're excluding 4% and any other kind of special um, programs that we might be using so that we're really targeting our 9% um, deals here um, in this particular view. So just giving a little flavor there um, into what that filtering looks like. So let's go ahead um, and move in now to section four through five, which is actually now we're targeting, we're still in our TCA property data view, um, and but we're going to use our section four through five view, which now brings us into targeting our 4% deals. Okay. Um, and again, you know, all the detail um, around <clears throat> how we filter, you know, based on our cycle year, um, the various um, pieces of information that we're using from this view, for example, uh, you know, we've got seven deals, you know, that's that's used in um, question A in section four through five. Um, and again, detailed in the slide deck for you. But, you know, notice um, and, and, and think about this idea that I've got this view saved for myself. I can reuse this every year to complete this reporting simply by by updating, changing um, this cycle year filter here. And so originally here, I'm looking at 2020. So now let me look at 2021. And it's it's that simple once you get these data views built um, to just do that cycle year filter and away you go. You're ready to fill in that section of the survey. Um, and it's a, it's a definite ease of use to help you out there, okay? So um, let's go ahead and take a look now into um, section seven. This is production by unit size. So now we're going to go ahead um, and take a look into our unit mix data view. So you saw I was in our properties data view. Now I'm heading into my unit mix data view, okay? Um, so again, same concept here. I'm in the unit mix data view. I've created the specific views that I need for each of the sections out of this particular data view. Same concept um, in terms of filtering simply um, by the year that we're trying to report for. Okay, so again, you know, you get these data views built. Uh, these views built, they're saved in the system for you, and it just becomes a simple matter of filtering each section by the year that you're reporting and is going to, you know, shave a lot of time off of what it takes to fill in this survey. So, um, again, section seven here, we're, we're reporting production by unit size. Um, and what we're looking at here um, is, again, filtering down to that year that we're reporting. I'm, again, I'm doing 2020. Um, and then I'm actually going to export this detail that I have returned in this data view um, into Excel. Um, and I have a little sample that I can show where I exported this out to Excel because I need to um, calculate um, the actual percentages. That's what this survey section is asking me for, um, is the, 
number of units allocated as a percentage. Okay, so that's where I'm grabbing that percentage from and filling that right into that section seven. Okay, so just a little bit different flavor there in terms of, um, you know, actually exporting one of our views um, and doing a little of our own math and operation on that data um, that we're getting out of the system. Um, next, we take a look at um, section nine, our minimum set aside and basis. So again, we're staying here within our unit mix data view um, and we're simply selecting our section nine view, okay? Um, this is showing us again, um, income targeting um, within our deals um, and enabling us to complete those details in section nine, um, you know, percentages at the different income levels and the like. Again, this is a scenario where you're going to be exporting to Excel um, and again, applying some of your own calculation um, to get those percentages that um, are being requested there um, in that section nine, okay? Um, next, we go ahead and look into section 10, which is targeting of housing credit units. Again, we're still talking now about units, so we're gonna remain here in our unit mix data view and simply select our section 10 view. OK, again, same concept, um, filtering that deal cycle down to the year that we need to do the reporting for. Um, that gives us the detail that we need here in the view. Um, and then, you know, again, they're in Section 10, they're asking for um, the counts of units as a percent of AMI. And so, again, this is a scenario where you're going to export to Excel um, and apply a percentage calculation there as well. Next, we take a look into um, section 11. This is units produced with housing credits for specific populations. So in this scenario, even though they're asking for units, we need to look at units by population. So we're going to head back into our properties data view to then use that view for that section. So here I am again at my properties data view. And again, I can select my views that are available and go right into my section 11. Um, this is the detail that I need um, to complete this particular section, okay? Um, I've got that deal there or the data there, again, um, filtering by that cycle year. Um, and then I can see that I have um, the details that I'm looking for in terms of, um, you know, units um, by these specific targeted populations. Um, they are asking in this section, they are asking again for a percentage. So again, we're gonna export to Excel. Um, and create that calculation of the percentage using, you know, that total in that grouping row, right? And then dividing by those total unit counts to arrive at those percentages. Next, we take a look into, um, and I believe our final um, section that we're supporting is section 12. Um, this is nonprofit allocations. Um, for this section, we're gonna actually use both um, a data view. Again, we're staying here in properties. So we're gonna use a data view and then we're gonna use also detail from our published QAP for the applicable reporting year, okay? So again, you saw me select, just simply select that section 12 view that I have. It gives me, you know, this view of the data that I need. Again, I'm uh, filtering by my cycle year, by the year that I'm trying to provide this reporting for. Um, and I can see then that I um, have the details here to report for section 12, okay? 
Um, and then finally, and I'll take us kind of back into our slide deck, I just wanted to, again, provide um, samples there um, of your nonprofit allocation requirements right from your published QAP and providing those there in that section 12. Um, so that kind of wraps us up um, for um, today's presentation live in the system there. Um, I'll go ahead and um, let Bree um, close us out. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time today. It's great to see you all participating. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kelly. Okay, I just took back the screen. Same one that Kelly was sharing, though, just wrapping up for today. We appreciate your attendance. Um, the next session that we're going to be doing, which will be our August webinar, uh, will include Kelly again, and we're going to be covering risk assessments. So please join us for that one. Um, we are going to be talking about compliance updates and best practices throughout our next quarter. So that'll be the next um, at least August, September, October sessions will be re revolving around compliance and best practices around compliance. Um, November is going to be that annual uh, ProLink Tech Live conference that I mentioned earlier, which you'll see a bunch of notifications and uh, invitations around that probably over the next, um, probably uh, still about six weeks out from that, but that will be coming in November. I think it's the week of November 7th for those who want to put it on their calendar. And we will have um, a number of training sessions covered during that that uh, two-day event. So it's usually a two-day conference we host virtually with um, around six training sessions and other uh, kind of sessions that include our clients and some guest speakers. Um, for the topics on risk assessments, we're going to cover property risk assessment, configuring risk assessment criteria, and then cr risk criteria examples for DCR, NOI, and inspections in ProLink HFA. So again, that'll be Wednesday, August 2nd at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and you'll get your normal uh, invitations and notices about that that you always do for these webinars. So thank you again for your time today. We appreciate it. And we'll look forward to seeing you on our next event. Please provide feedback. If you have any topics that you're just hoping to see on here, please let us know. We'd love to do that. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.